Hi friends, welcome to the first tutorial of 2020. In today's video, I'm going to work through a little practice exercise that I like to use as a warm up if I haven't been painting in a little while. Hi friends, welcome back. My name is Shada. Let's talk supplies for this video. We are using cold pressed watercolor paper and I've traced a circle in pencil very lightly on that paper. And then I'm going to use my uh, Mungyo 48 pan watercolor set. I love this set. It's good quality paints um, and a great selection of colors as well. And you can see I've done up a little color chart there to help me um, pick my colors. And then I have two glasses of clean water as usual, paper towel for blotting. And today I have a couple sable hair paint brushes at my disposal. These are good animal hair brushes. Uh, I have a number four, two, and and one. I think I'm mostly going to use the two and the one because I am out of practice. Uh, so I want a smaller brush, more control of course with a smaller brush. And I'm starting by mixing up a few different colors of green. This um, practice piece is really not about the colors. You can choose any colors that you like. I'm going to work in sort of warm greens and browns and peaches. Um, and yeah, I'm going to use a small brush today. I've been traveling over the holidays. I've also been really sick for the past 10 days. And so for me, filming today, I'm just really trying to do something that will help ease us back into the painting process. Kind of like a nice friendly stretch. So I'm using the number two brush, as I said. I've got some green here, and I am just going to paint leaves and flowers. And we are going to do mostly leaves. And you can see for this first one, I'm just working through. I'm doing a very thin stem, and then I just add a little pressure to that brush to form the shapes of the leaves on the page. I'm not overthinking it. I'll just say, okay maybe I could put another leaf here or there I want everything kind of connected and um, where the idea with this piece is simply to fill in the circle so when you're done your practice you have something pretty something that would look good in a watercolor sketchbook but it really is just about your brushwork and kind of getting comfortable with the brush in your hand you can see I'm doing some little peach colored flowers some of them have four petals but other ones are just a V shape or a heart shape or a little blob <laughs> and then we'll try some more leaves here and maybe this time we're going to try a different leaf shape so maybe adding a bit more of a point um, and it's not important that you follow along exactly with my painting I think it's important that you just you know feel the brush in your hand use a brush size that's comfortable for you think about doing some leaves that are a little bigger or smaller some that are pointier or rounder and just see what emerges the next plant that I want to do here is um, one that has a dark brown branch. So I'm starting with the brown that will be in the center and I'm just doing some random lines on the page. And then I'm coming in with a nice mossy green and we're going to do some leaf shapes. So just running the brush across the page, we're gonna run the belly of the brush across that paper in order to form these random leaf shapes. Some are thin, some are a little thicker, wider, and we're just filling in and it's quite random and it doesn't have to be perfect. As this one dried, the paint was quite thin, so it dried very quickly. I decided to come back in and add just a few details there with a slightly darker green, but everything is very perfectly imperfect. This is just a warm up. You can see I mostly start with the stem in the center and then I'll do pairs of leaves or single leaves. And again, I'm working in a warm color palette today of browns and peaches and sort of olive greens and mossy greens. And I love the way that looks. You just want to get comfortable again with the way that brush feels in your hand, with the way that the paint flows off of the brush or how much moisture you'd like to have in those bristles. I know for me, I haven't painted in three weeks because of travel and illness. And uh, actually, as I was painting this, I was on a lot of cold medication and I felt like I couldn't 
feel my hands properly. But uh, through all of that, whether you're a little out of practice or very out of practice or just not feeling good about painting, uh, this piece is one that you can sort of approach slowly, carefully and meditatively. Um, and don't be afraid to mess up a little bit. Not every leaf needs to be perfect. I think as the entire circle of flowers and leaves comes together, you won't notice if one's not quite as good as another. Uh, these flowers here, I'm making them a little larger, but they're basically just blotches of color and we'll add a little more detail later. And also adding the stems and the leaves, it adds an element of detail that can bring a, a blob to life and turn it into a flower when it might not look so much like a flower. You also want to think about doing some leaves that are different sizes. I think I already said that, but these little ones always look nice and it's just about taking the brush and adding just that little hint of pressure in order to form the shape of the leaf on the page. You can add different flowers. Uh, some of mine, are, as I said, are just four petals or little blobs. These ones are these tiny little brush strokes. Um, they sort of look like little asters. But again, quite simple and it's all about just making a simple shape on the page in order to get us used to pulling the brush and pushing the brush. I really um, actually struggled a little with this piece. I started over twice. I didn't feel like I was painting um, in a way that was good enough for me to be on camera. And you know, when you're sick, it's like everything looks bad. <laughs> um, so don't feel bad if you're a little out of practice we have all been there. Nobody is going to be able to paint every day, but that practice really does make progress. And having a, a, a weekly art practice where you paint once a week or twice a week, it makes such a huge difference. And even for someone who paints as often as I do, uh, three weeks away from it, it makes a difference. So, but you can always get back into it. Use a smaller brush if you need to. Do what you need to do to um, make yourself comfortable with the paints again. And for me today, it was using a bit of a smaller brush and just working really carefully and slowly. And uh, here I'm adding a bit of detail to these flowers. So you can always do wet on dry. You know, just lay down some color, let it dry, and then come back in and add a little more color later. Maybe some dotting for the stamen in the flower or some lines on the leaves. As the circle fills in, you probably will need to erase it because it's nice to break that border ever so slightly. Um, so erase the pencil as you work your way around the circle and just continue to fill in each and every little spot. This piece really succeeds when the entire circle is filled. And as I said, you're not going to notice if one leaf or flower isn't as good or if you mess up on one or two. It looks great as a finished piece where the circle is full of these tiny little flowers and leaves. I'm adding just some delicate thin lines to this larger leaf shape just using the very tip of my brush and a very dark green and uh, that is it. My circle is all done. This is a great way to warm up after a time away from painting or if you just haven't been feeling like you're succeeding lately, this is a good practice exercise to do. I hope you'll paint along with me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon with a new tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe.